uh, in uh, 2009, she finished her uh, MBBS. In 2010, she cleared her MCC EE. And from 2011, she volunteered a lot with uh, many organizations and in uh, um, hospitals and to share her experience with you. We are honored. Please welcome our family Then, then on I was, uh, I wanted to go to US basically, but then uh, my spouse was going to Canada because my in-laws are there. So I started both uh, my studies for US and Canada. So I was studying simultaneously for all the exams. Um, I was also working in India for a brief time and then we went to New Jersey where I started studying for all the exams and did my EE. And finally we shifted to uh, Canada in 2011. I got my match in family medicine which was my topmost choice uh, this year. So I started my residency in July. So that's the story just in short. Before I landed in Canada, I thought life would be very rosy. I'm going to one of the you know, most terrible parts of the world and I was happy. But then shortly thereafter I came to know that life is not going to be that easy for sure. Uh, so this is my Clowns match experience. I'm not really sure uh, how many of you have uh, some knowledge about the Indian system. But uh, if you want to work in Canada, you need to do residency there. And uh, the matching system there is called as Clowns. Basically that's the Canadian residency matching system. Uh, for me, my first attempt was unsuccessful at the system. Uh, first, it was both the exams, and uh, I'm not really sure. Is anyone doing the US exams for now? It's terrible. It's terrible. So basically, maybe you, you must be doing something about ECFMG and the uh, step one CK and the CS. In Canada, we also have a series of three exams. Uh, all the exam information you can find from this main website, which is the which is Medical Council of Canada website, ncc.ca. I'll also browse uh, with you all those websites in a while. The second step that you need to know is about the credentials verification, so uh, the degree that you get from here. And even before you get it, you need to start off your paper process. And basically what that means is the Canadian government will uh, go through your paperwork and see if everything is okay, like if you are using the standards. It's just like a, it's like a formality, so, but it's better for you to start with this at an early stage so that you don't get stuck in the that. So that's the website for that. And this is just recently uh, a new website when I was applying in 2009. It was called PCRC, and PCRC and MCC were two different entities, and then that made things very complicated for me. But now, fortunately for you guys, uh, you just have one website, and this is the main portal via which you can uh, get your credentials verified, get your degrees and internship certificates verified, and you apply for your exams also through the same website. Uh, then the third and the main uh, web main uh, hub for you to go for your match. Is the Spam.ca. So this is the main website through which you make your uh, applications online for your residency. So you you put your uh, all your portfolios out there. You actually get a period of three or four months to work on your portfolios and, and strengthen your application on this website. So basically, this is the main one that you'll be going to. Uh, the last website is CPR.com. My experience has come to know, and now they have been putting on their own website and saying that this is the most important that we have. So for all international medical graduates, NACOSTI is a very important thing. Uh, so this is just a clipping from MCC, but I think it's better if I can just take you to the, to the actual website. So this is mcc.ca. So this is a website that you will, you will go for for all your exam information. If you need to know and you have to do a lot of groundwork, say if you're targeting for residency in, say you all will graduate in which year? Which year? In 2000. So yeah, so this is the right time for you guys to start. Maybe next year, like say from now, it's good time for you to do the groundwork and know about these things, know about the exams. But start applying, start studying for your exams by next year. So 2014 to 2016, two years is a good time. Because the more you wait, uh, like for me, the mistake I did was I made, I waited till my internship got over and then I made up my mind to go to Canada. And then I wasted a lot of time. And uh, the more number of years you waste uh, doing your exams. It keeps counting on your CV, and then that acts against you, right? Because uh, you need to understand that you are competing against uh, other. So basically, the way it works here, it's, it's good for me to let you know. Uh, for residency in Canada, you are competing against other uh, kids of of Canada who have gone out to study. So they are called as CSAs, Canadian Studying Abroad. So they are also international graduates, but they usually go to Caribbean. They usually go to other nearby parts of of Canada, and they study there, and then they come back to Canada. So you, we all are actually competing against them, and um, that that makes things a little difficult because they they have won a lot up there, and so the, so the government over there really gives them an upper hand as compared to us. They want to absorb them back, right? 
And there, if you look at their profiles, they, they only want to waste one year. As soon as they graduate, like for me in my batch, uh, I have all my my uh, peers who have just graduated now in 2013. So you can imagine, I was like 2009, I'm a really old graduate. So it was difficult for me that. So what I'm trying to say is that if you were really uh, pursuing the Canadian system, start your work from now, don't waste any time. Because you're competing against people who are really refused the knowledge of that. But it's more like a screening exam. So you sit there for like four hours, you need to answer the multiple choice questions, which are approximately 200 questions. Um, and then once you clear that, then this is just the, the most important required milestone to apply to this. So you really need to have this. And the time period for you to do this is within 20 months of your graduation. So say you're graduating in 2016, which month? July. Okay, so then approximately 20 months minus from that, and you can that's when you are able to go and start the exam. And this is a good time because you're already doing a clinical studies right now. So everything is fresh in your mind. This is waiting for you to get over to start studying, preparing, and doing this from now. Uh, and if you click on all of these, uh, all of these things, they give you exactly everything that you need to know. So you are all eligible because our school is already enrolled in IMED, and you must be a student in the final 20 months. Well. So it includes the internship. Yes, yes. 20 months from your graduation. So some, uh, basically in US and Canada, the way it works is they don't have this internship system. They finish the studies and then uh, the PG by one of residency is considered to be very But for us, in our school, it was different. We need to do internship first and then we need to So basically, you need to take the time of graduation. So internship. Can you, is there any form of internship which you can do in Canada as we have to pay for it? So if I wanted to do my internship outside of Canada, oh. I know that when I was doing my internship, there were a lot of other students who were doing internship outside Dubai. So they were outside Dubai. I did it in Dubai. But then a lot of other students did it in the place where they came from. So some of them did it in Saudi Arabia, some of them did it in Germany, Oman. But I don't know about Canada. And I think they don't allow that. Because uh, they, they were doing internships and they can that the only there is PGY1. And PGY1 is residency. So you need to get the residency first. And uh, in order to get to residency, you need to first complete all of this, right? So basically, you're still stuck with teams. So we finish the yeah. So that's uh, And so this is uh, the first exam. Now, this uh, study gives you a lot of uh, examination preparation uh, resources as well. Uh, you have all your textbook links as well here. Uh, well, the only book that I used for studying was uh, Toronto Notes. But then. Toronto Notes is a, it's a specific book only for um, for Canadian exams. I'm not sure if you can get it here. I have soft copies. If anyone is interested, I can forward those to them. But then that won't be updated. So they they update it every year. So if you want the you know because guidelines change every year. So it's best always to get it more recent. We have to which which That's good enough. Yeah. And they also always give it with CDs. If you want that any of you are interested, you can share the CDs as soft copy. So this is uh, the whole list of books that uh, are there, are suggested by the Medical Council of Canada. But frankly speaking, I did not study a lot from this, uh, just because they are very detailed. One of them which is important is uh, Shah, C.B. Shah. This book uh, gives you all details of Canadian ethics and uh, population immunity. Uh, right? So this is a very good book. If at all you want to buy anything, you can buy this. And apart from that, goes to So that was about uh, this website, and you can find the next exam here is MCCQE1. So that's a qualifying examination. Uh, now this exam is uh, again, when, as I, as I told you, the Canadian system is not very transparent. It's not like the US, in which US they always tell you that you need to do your step one, step two, CS, and step two, CK, and then you can apply. In Canada, they say if you have this exam, it might, you know, increase your chances of getting a residency. So things are always easy in Canada. So this exam, uh, QE1, some programs are there which uh, do before this exam. So if you're looking for uh, certain programs, say you want to do surgery or family medicine, you need to, I'll show you the other website where you can go and find out the program descriptions too. And then you need to know whether your program needs this exam or not. But what happens?
questions. Uh, in this case, career, your education, um, uh, you're about to finish uh, your medical school. Ladies and, and gentlemen, uh, they come in from fact, uh, following the president of National Health. Uh, you have to be followed by the uh, HR and the board. So, uh, okay. I got the country where I'm going now. Okay, so how many of you are thinking of you at? Okay. Alright. Okay. Okay, how many of you are thinking of UK? Okay, how many of you are thinking of Germany? Alright, good. Okay, how many of you are of Canada? Okay, uh, anywhere else? Uh, You're in the Emirates. Emirates, right? Okay. Alright, so uh, I assume the rest of you have got uh, two important things. They just got it now a 
year ago. So they haven't had a batch that graduated, so I can't answer completely. What they do say is that you would be eligible for benefit and that uh, you could write the board certification exam if you do it from the self Step is the only one that has to provide does not have uh, you would have to talk to one of um, Dr. Amin Rika. He's the head of uh, the uh, program in the hospital. So if you want to try to write the you can answer to the But Dr. So far, I I hope you're right. But nevertheless, like you would